From here on out, every foul is flagrant, boy. Let's go. You are now tuned into the chat room, your favorite baller's favorite podcast. All right, well, welcome back to another episode of the chat room podcast. Uh, as you can tell right away, I'm not the senator. Um, this is episode, I believe, seven today. Um, but yeah, today, uh, you know, myself, Mr. Francis, uh, we got fanfare. What's going on? What's going on? And uh, today we got uh, a very special guest for, for those of you guys across Toronto, basketball community. You guys will definitely know who this is. Um, we got Pops. How you doing, man? What's going on, fellas? Thanks for having me, man. Uh, no problem, man. We definitely appreciate you taking the time out and yeah. join us today. Um, out of your busy schedule, we definitely appreciate that. <laughs> sure, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Always got time to give back to us, man. That's that's we appreciate it. This is why we do it, right? Definitely. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Uh, but yeah, let's just jump into it, guys. Let's um, kind of, kind of, kind of, uh, thinking back, man. Qu- question for both of you guys: Um, who's a teacher that both of y'all can kind of think back to? Who kind of uh, was a good teacher to you, or a great teacher to you? They could think back to. Oh, well, for me, I'm going to say it was my first coach. My first coach, uh, Joe White, he taught me the game of basketball. And he was the first coach, or I would say, you know, man uh, in regards to sports who I, you know, revered. You know, I held him in a high regard. He not only taught me about basketball, but he taught us and a, young, a bunch of other young, you know, black kids in North London or, yeah, Northeast London, um, how to be men. And it gave us a little, some a sense of direction and some guidance. And, you know, that's, that's, and, you know, he passed away in 2002 from stomach cancer. And, you know, ever, ever since he passed away, I've, you know, I've kind of dedicated or not kind of, I have um, dedicated, you know, my, my journey in this game to, to finishing the goal that he started. And that is leading and inspiring through the game, through the game. And so he's one of the first coaches I ever had, if not the first coach I had. And, you know, he inspired me to to want to do great things because of what he did for my life and so many others. So I'm trying to reciprocate and, you know, pay it forward to to the next generation like it was done for me. That's dope. That's that's really dope. Like we, we as you see that like we're we are a uh, byproduct of uh, that man. So appreciate mm-hmm. appreciate him, you know, for sure. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, fair, what about you, bro? Um, probably for me, probably my grade eight teacher, Mr. Foreman, he was um, a music teacher and he kind of really um, taught me to push for, um, like finding your passions Mm -hmm. type of thing. I never really thought about what I'm actually passionate about at that time. But when I got into high school, I started to really think about passions and what I like to do and got into college and that really stuck with me. When he was one of those person that was really, um, he was a person that was really pushing about what are you passionate about or what do you think you're going to be passionate about? Because that, like solidifying it that back then was going to help you in the future. So I would say him, he's a teacher that really sticks out. No, that's dope. I mean, for myself, it's, 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 it's interesting because I, I, I never really had those uh, really, really positive teachers. And that, that kind of, that kind of stuck out with me, like, those that know me know that like I was like I was like a bad kid, not not mm-hmm. bad per se, but I was always <laughs> angry. I was always getting something, always in trouble, always in detention. The only the only thing that kind of saved me was basketball. You know, like growing up mm-hmm. in, in Toronto in the hood, like it was like basketball was the only thing that really saved me. So like in regards to teachers, I never really had a teacher that kind of did like I had one teacher, Miss Burford, in grade eight, uh, Joseph Red. She's kind of the first one that kind of told me, you know drop everything like you like you're really good at basketball like like pursue that try and do that you know but like i would say the person who's been most influential for me has been uh my 
Her name is Michelle Joseph from Boys and Girls Club of East Scarborough. Go to know Boys and Girls Club. Um, she has she was like the volunteer coordinator for a long time. Like basically, that like, she's been with me since I was like eight years old, seven, eight years old. You know, she's always, always, always been in my corner, no matter what I did. Like, like literally, I could be fighting somebody in the hallway. She'll put me in, in, in her office. Say, no, stop that. You know. And that's when I was eight, seven, eight, nine years old. And now to this day, she's like my daughter's godmother. You know, so it's just wow. like, yeah, yeah, crazy. Yeah. And like, she's just been that one who's like always, always, always been in my corner. And no matter what has been going on, I've always been telling me, yo, you can, you can do better. You can do other things, you know? So she's definitely been uh, that person to me. So shout out to you, Michelle. I know you're definitely watching this. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, kind of going forward a little bit, what have been things you guys have been binge watching lately, man? You want to take this one first, D? Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> I know, I, I, um, I know, Fafford been watching a bunch of stuff, man. Or, or you're just busy right now, man. Yeah. Um, I, I, I watch. I mean, all my shows are back on now. It's fall season. Yeah. So everything's back, back, back on. Yeah, I know, I know. Like, but um, binge watching. I don't really, I don't really binge watch. I kind of watch everything. I, I'm live. I'm, okay, I, okay. Right, so, I, so, yeah, so. I watch everything. I, but I did binge watch um, a show on Netflix. It's a Korean show called Squid Game. I don't know if you guys heard it. Good, so, no, I have yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> I have it in my to watch list, so I'm gonna watch. It's, it. Yeah, that is that. That's something that oh, if you guys are not familiar with those Korean shows. I mean, it's pretty gory and stuff like that. It it's it's a psychological. It's a psychological show. Yeah, it's really good. Okay. So okay. that that um, pardon? Squid Lake. Squid Game. Squid Game. Squid Game. Squid Game. Okay. Yeah, on Netflix. Yeah, um, yeah, you guys should check that out on Netflix. And I just. Um, there's a show called C on Apple TV with um, Jason Momoa. You guys, if you want to yeah, check that yeah, out too, it's yeah. pretty, pretty much just, yeah, post-apocalyptic world. Everyone's blind, but the people that oh, can wow. see, they're labeled as witches. It's a pretty dope show. Sounds like, and, uh, um, what's that What's that movie that came out? Like, blindness? No, oh, not Blindness, man. Sounds like, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 um, the Bird Box, Bird Box, Bird, bird Box. box. <laughs> <laughs> No, but this one is like it's like through the generations people can't see. Like okay. it didn't just not some natural thing that this happened. <laughs> okay. But yeah, if you guys yeah, Apple TV has some good stuff. Another show yeah, that just okay. came on on there called Foundation. It's a sci-fi show, but if people are into sci-fi, you could you guys could check that out. Okay. Yeah, I'm just and then obviously I'm just watching like Survivor and um Our Kind of People, the new black show that just started on Fox. Um yeah. it's about yeah, it's about these um a, a girl. She goes into like a rich black influential community, and she's trying to make her mark there, coming from nothing. So that's a really good show. I think it's, it's I think it's um the maker of Empire. Is it Lee Harvey Daniels that made Empire? What's I believe you? this is this is his show. Lee okay. Daniels, Lee Daniels. Yeah, yeah this is his show. Yeah, dope. our kind of people. So you guys could check that out. Dope, yeah. dope, dope. Um, for me, man. Uh. As you can imagine, my schedule is a little crazy. So yeah. <laughs> if I'm if I'm at home, you know, uh, stationary, which is rare, um, I may just turn the TV on, and I don't get to watch many new shows. Maybe in the winter. Okay. And when I travel, I, if I'm if I can be watching a game or watching a show, I could probably be doing some work too. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, when I I, t I take some free moments, but I usually watch like Law and Order. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's back. That's back. <laughs> it's back. My favorite show, although it's end, it's uh, it's the series ended is Veep. So some days, mm. um, I'll just have it playing in the background and just be <laughs> laughing. And so, yeah. you know, I watch some Veep. Uh, I can't get enough of um, Narcos. Um, great show. Great show. Coming back out, I think in November. Yeah, it's coming back. Yeah. And uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So you know, sometimes <laughs> I'll rewatch. They did Colombia. They did Colombia. They did Mexico. I got so this Mexico. is this is this is this is season four, I believe. Okay. I know, coming but, out. but but like where but like where are they gonna be it's though? Still in Mexico. Mexico. It's still in Mexico. Yeah, it's it's season four in Mexico. Yeah, they're continuing it. It's, but they it's, find, but yeah. they it's now it's like El Chapo is coming. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. yeah. now it's his show, which is yeah, yeah. pretty interesting. Which is I loved mm -hmm. the first one because growing up in London, I kind of vaguely remember. I'm probably I'm a little bit older than you guys, but. I vaguely remember that whole time in Colombia and everything that was going on. Yeah. So watching it and see, and seeing like the depiction of it was, you know, it was pretty crazy to me. And then obviously yeah. we, we, with all the media coverage that, you know, the 
the Sinaloa cartel and El Chapo got, you know, we get to see, you know, the madness behind the scenes. So I definitely uh, love watching that show. Like for me, like I've been, I, I binge watched uh, it's a show on Netflix called uh, Clickbait. I'm sure y'all, y'all see mm-hmm. that. Let's start again. I, yeah, I, I binge watched that in like a day. Um, it kind of ended the way I thought it was going to end, but I didn't think the person who did it was the person that did it. So I'm not going to spill no beans, but like. Mm-hmm. I got to check yeah. it out then. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, like, we, me and my girl are going to watch that. Yeah, watch it, watch it. Yeah, yeah. So like, as you're watching, you'll be like, okay, yo, I kind of know what's going on. I can kind of catch on what's going on, but at the end, you're like, yo, I didn't see it playing out like how it played yeah. out. So it's, mm-hmm. so it's pretty dope. The only thing that sucks about it is that I don't see how you can be, how, how you can make a season two after what happened. Mm-hmm. You know, like, it just seems like it's just one of those things where it's just one season and done or whatever, you know. Um, I'm definitely I haven't watched it yet, but the new the new uh, season of uh, Money Heist I'm gonna watch it w- with my girl probably next week. I'm still stuck on season one on that one. What? <laughs> yeah, no, nah, like I stopped and I'm trying to get back into get it. Back into it. Yeah. I'm paying good things though. I've been seeing a lot of stuff, like a lot of. I've been trying to stay off, stay off IG and stuff. I've been seeing a lot of people post things that I, I kind of know what was going to happen, like saying like, rest in peace to- Tokyo and stuff. So like, I'm kind of like upset of like seeing that stuff already, but I'm definitely going to watch it already. Yeah, that, um, that, happened to right. me with power. that happened to me with power. Yeah. I was watching yeah. it <laughs> just a couple episodes, then everybody around me was talking about it. Talking about it was, yeah. like, <laughs> no spoiler alerts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watch, so like, <laughs> I've been I've been trying to stay off IG because Money Heist is one of those things that like once you're in it, like you gotta you gotta keep watching it because it's, it, mm-hmm. it's, it's so like uh, it, it draws you in so much, you know. Mm. But yeah, we'll, we'll jump into the discussion, man. So um, yeah, as I said earlier, man, for 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 those of us who kind of know basketball in Toronto, basketball fans in Toronto, we we definitely know um, who you are. Um, but kind of talk to our audience and talk to us about your journey, man. Like, how, like, what, what got you started in basketball? How did you get to basketball? I know, like you say, you grew up in, in uh, South London, but tell us your journey again. North, from- London, North London. North, North London. London. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to allow you to say that I'm from South London. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Being, being, being up in, in North London and then making your, making your way to the league, man. Like, what's that story like? One second. Joey. Could you keep it down? <laughs> my son. Um, so, you know, for me, wow. I told you um, my coach, um, my coach introduced me to the game. I was 13 years old in London. I was playing, so- one second. Joey, you got to go inside. You got to go inside, it's too loud. Um, or you can sit here, come on. Uh, <laughs> He knew he was going to come outside and make noise. So <laughs> that I was doing. So, um, yeah, so I was running track, playing soccer. Track was was my, my first love. I, um, you know, I, I discovered basketball when my brother left the, the UK to come to the US um, and got a scholarship, went to, to Washington State to play. And from that moment on, um, and from that moment on, and from that moment on, Basketball, you know, has been my my sport and my passion. I uh, moved to the U.S. in '98 to go to school, and again, I played JV uh, my first year out here. And you know, kind of fast forwarding through, I went to you know, I was able to get a scholarship to GW, um, and then like th- four or five years later, after playing JV, I was playing on the best team in the NBA, the Dallas Mavericks. Um, I got to GW. Um, under the radar, no, not highly touted, not highly recruited. I, you know, the GW was the only school I visited. I had some other offers, but I just wanted to make my decision and, you know, jump in with both feet. You know, we, when I got to GW, we were the worst team in the conference. When I graduated, uh, we were the best, we were the top five team in the country. So, um, you know, with kids now, I always tell them, you know, the cream always rises to the top. You know, I had mm-hmm. opportunity to go to UConn and some other big schools and decided that I wanted, I needed to develop and I needed to play immediately. I knew if I went to UConn, they was going to recruit another All-American that was probably going to end up playing over me and we wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation maybe. So, you know, going to GW allowed me to grow not only as a person, but as a player too. 
So um, by the time I was a junior, I was setting these little goals. And the little goals was, you know, start as a freshman, hopefully. I did that. You know, become one of the better players in the conference. I was most improved player in the in Atlantic 10 my sophomore year. Then I was like, well, try to be one of the best players in the country, seeing as you're accomplishing every um, goal that you set for yourself. Mm -hmm. And I ended up, you know, ended up being able to end the draft my junior year. I decided to come back to school, but I realized that everything I was putting my mind and my focus and determination to, I was able to achieve. And then, you know, I went undrafted, which was a goal of mine, but I was still able to, still able to sign on with the Dallas Mavericks, who were the best team in the NBA at the time. Yeah. I did. Um, that was the start of my pro career. Uh, I was there for a year, then played in Italy my second year. I uh, was in Spain, hurt my shoulder, and ended up going to the G League in San Antonio. And I remember, um, I remember I, I had a string of games where I played, you know, I played really well, and I got a call from Jay Triano telling me if I was on the Raptors that day, I would have started. And then the rest is history. I, I end up in Toronto and, you know, it's still my favorite city, favorite time, favorite uh, basketball experience that I've had. And I've had a few um, to date, you know, the way the fans, the people um, receive me and embrace me even to this day. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm no, but I, I don't consider myself a, uh, Chris Bosch, Vince Carter, Kyle Lowry, but the reception and the the reception I receive when I come back to Toronto is special, which is why it's always going to be near and dear to my heart. So, you know, Toronto did two years in Toronto, uh, played for four other NBA teams, Spurs, Mavericks, Rockets, and the Pelicans, or the Pelicans now. And then the rest of my career was spread out over Europe. So, uh, you know, I was an Olympian in 2012 with the British national team. Uh, also retired in 2015. With, uh, uh, my, our friend, Kyle, Kyle Johnson. Kyle Johnson. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. My guy, my young fella right there, man. I love that guy. Yeah, so did that and um, brings me to you, here to you today. Retired in 2015. Uh, scouted with the Spurs for a couple years, was GM with the Wizards G League team for, for a couple, and now I'm with the, the Knicks. That's dope, that's dope. Really mm -hmm. dope story. I mean, it's just perseverance and I gave all you the of that, notes. I gave you the cliff notes of the story. Yeah, nah, that's cool, man. man. <laughs> we need two hours to go in the depth. <laughs> give you the cliff notes. Yeah, nah, we definitely appreciate that, man. So kind of like um, flashing back, man, like, or like kind of going back, like, who were some of the guys that were, or are athletes or basketball players that you kind of looked up to as you were kind of coming up and you were kind of seeing that that uh, goal of get, reaching the NBA getting closer and closer? Primarily, my brother, I, I always wanted to follow in his footsteps and I'm out of my game, my approach, you know, my whole being, but, you know, around him. Uh, we're talking about NBA players. It's the typical Michael Jordan, um, Kim Olajuwon, KG was probably my, the player that I most tried to model my game around as far as NBA players are concerned. I loved his you know, I loved his tenacity. I loved his energy. I loved the way he played with emotion. Um, I wore 21. He's the reason why, and one of the reasons why I wore 21. You know, funny enough, I wore 21, but all of my favorite players in in the course of NBA history also wore 21. So Duncan, Dominique Wilkins, Kevin Garnett. That's, you know, that's Dominique Wilkins because he was an athlete. Tim Duncan because he was a big that was skilled. And I loved his demeanor and how he carried himself, even though I was the exact opposite. <laughs> um, AG, because I saw a mirror image of myself yeah. who played with that kind of passion. And I was like, well, I can do it too. You know, seeing somebody that looks, that seemingly looks like me um, have that approach and doing what he's doing, it was inspiration. So um, those were the three NBA players, I would say were my favorite. But um, my brother primarily was the, was the guy who, was the person that I really wanted, that I really followed. That's dope. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, so you, you come to Canada. Yes. And a lot You're of done, NBA done players. Know. You're done, a, no. A, a lot of NBA <laughs> a lot of NBA players, they think they think it's like Siberia up here. It's like the Antarctica. They think they're coming up yeah. here. We live in igloos and it's, it's super good. cold out here. No one wants to come out here. So what was your first thoughts about coming out here when you first came to Toronto? 
Wow. My first, I, I didn't have any like, um, anything to, to compare it to. I didn't know what I was getting into. I knew I was going to Toronto. I think after my rookie year, I may have missed that trip to Toronto because I was, had, they had signed me to the G League, so I had never been. And mm -hmm. so I get there and I start hearing people talk. And then I seen, I'm seeing this diverse um, city that, um, that I'm hearing people that look like me talk like how I used to talk in London. <laughs> so I'm like, what, what is going on here? Like, that's why I was telling um, uh, DJ Fan that my, I used to go to Brampton and Scarborough to get my hair cut. And like my teammates would think I was crazy because you know nobody nobody does that. But I was like, it's like home. <laughs> I grew up in that element, and I actually felt like it allowed the culturally for the 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 people in Toronto to respect me a little bit more. That's it wasn't so why cool. I did it, um, but I felt like um, the reason why I may still get some of that reception now, which I'm you know humbled by, is because I was just me. I was just me. I was. I felt like I was in London. I, I wasn't. I never considered myself holier than thou or or above anybody. And, and Toronto was like home to me, in every way. You know, the the food, the people. There was a Ghanaian community there that I could latch onto and and still get my traditional food. I love Jamaican okay. food too. And mm -hmm. you know, it's there's a um, a huge Jamaican community out there. For sure, um, yeah. And I, and I loved it. And then on the court. They embraced me too, just by the way I played. So when I got there, I just was like, I'm just going to play hard. And that's that's what I've kind of hung my hat on over the course of my career. And I told myself I was going to play hard and they, they they liked it and they embraced me in doing so. So uh, it was a special, it's always going to be special to me, man, regardless of, you know, playing in the Olympics, you know, I've played in, you know, I've been a star in Europe on some teams, but nothing can replace my time in Toronto. Yeah. And, and that's always a consistent thing with a lot of players that come yeah. here. They always say it's like the way that they're they're received from the yeah. people and stuff like that. It's like it's just the, it's always well received. And I mean, it's a testament to our fans too. Like our fans, one thing about our the um, our Toronto fans is if you're giving us a hundred percent, if you're giving us everything, if you're leaving out there in the court, yeah. we're gonna ride with you. Even when you leave, we're still yeah, going to rock with you. So it is. That's how it always is with the Toronto fans. We see with another team, we'll still cheer for you. We'll still root for you. That's just how we are real here. Yeah. So yeah. it's always good to hear stuff like that. We're always consistent with the love that we give to a lot of the guys that play for our team. That's the you can't say that. Well, you can't say that with a lot of teams Honestly, in the NBA. That's yeah. the one place. That's the one thing about, about Toronto is that Toronto, similar to like Philly and New York and, and those like big market US, US places, is that the fans and the people in the city, they really appreciate real, you know, like mm -hmm. can't fake it. Mm -hmm. Can't yeah. fake it with the fans because I, because the fans are either really not, they're knowledgeable about the game of basketball and they can, and they, and they, and they, and they know basketball or they just, they're just blue collar, hardworking people who just oh. appreciate people that just come out and just work. You know, no questions asked, put their heart, their hard hat on just work, you know? So I think that's definitely one of the reasons why, you still get a lot of love in Toronto, for sure. That's yeah. dope. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So you were a part of that early Toronto Raptors team with the Rosen and the now Hall of Famer Chris Bosh. Mm -hmm. So what was what was it like playing with those guys back then? Man, so it's funny, man. My my time in Toronto, like I said, I was coming from the G League. I wasn't expecting anything when I got to Toronto. I was just I was I'm gonna put it all out there and see what happens. And I remember, mm -hmm. funny enough. One day I get a, a call from a number, a block number, and I answer it. Um, and, I, and I answer it, and it's, uh, I hear, yo, it's CB. I was like, who the hell is CB? Like, well, <laughs> well, who is this? And he was like, it's CB, fool. Come to the house. We're going to have some imported beer, and my chef is going to cook. <laughs> I'm still like, who is? Like, it's Chris. I was like, oh, so my, again, I'm not, I'm still a, I'm still a G League guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, coming to um, you know, I'm still a G League guy, as you can see. Coming to <laughs> the team with that I'm getting, you know, all this um playing time on and then this this uh attention now. And now the best player and you know, one of the figureheads of the team and one of the best players to ever play uh, you know, on that team is calling me. And that's when our friendship began and we grew, you know, we grew into really close friends. I was in his wedding. Um, 
you know, that's that's a brother to me now. And, you know, seeing what he did, it's funny because I saw the transition from averaging like 25 and 12 in in Toronto where, you know, he couldn't, he was everything in Canada, but he could walk around in some cities and they'd be like, oh, that looks like a basketball player. Yeah. When he yeah. gets to Miami and he averages 18 points and seven rebounds. He's a rock star. Yeah. <laughs> rock star. So, you know, I saw that transition and saw him grow into that. It's unfortunate, you know, his career had to end, you know, the way yeah. it did. But, you know, I was, I was at the Hall of Fame when he got inducted the other day and, you know, he, it was probably the most powerful and inspiring speech I've I've heard to yeah. date, um, and it, it was it was special to see and you know to to be able to call him a brother, you know, was all the more special for me. And that is the epitome of um, that defines my time in Toronto. You know, I, I met great people. You know, you know, had great friends and great experiences. And now I got to share. I get to share those moments with the people who I met while in Toronto. Um, as far as Demar is concerned, you know, I, I see in him from his rookie year to who he is now. Um, is is every it, year he gets better? Huh? Mm-hmm. So I'm saying, I say every year DeRozan in the league, he gets better every single. Got better. Year. He got yeah. better. I remember came seeing the, the came into the league. Everyone was saying they couldn't shoot, and now can't even open the mid, in mid post like. Crazy. Yeah. Every year he gets better. Yeah, yeah. So I've seen him now. You know, we spoke. I saw him the other day in summer league, and you know, just seeing him grow up. He was a kid when when, when we were mm-hmm. in Toronto together. Now he's blossomed into this this player um, that he is now, and this man that he is now. And you know, it's like I, like I said, those experiences are what make being into in Toronto and being in the NBA with um, so many different teams and, and teammates what makes it special. And, I'm, you know, I'm glad I had that experience. I can still share those moments. And funny enough, I was with Rudy Gay a couple of days ago. And we, okay. were, we were catching up and reminiscing about his time in Toronto and my time in Toronto and, like, sharing stories. So it was, it was it's great. It was great to see, um, to see those guys, you know, blossom into the men that they have become today. Yeah, that's yeah. dope. Yeah. yeah, like, Toronto, yeah, man, but we had some, like, those are fun times watch Raptor games. It was, yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just the grind. That's what it was. It was just that yeah. was a long grind. Yeah. Like so, you got you as players. Like I can't even imagine what y'all went through. But me as a fan, I was tired. I was exhausted. Like yeah. I, I went through it as a fan. So I can't even imagine what you guys went through with as a players. Yeah, yeah I mean it's, it's crazy. I mean if you think about it, one of my f- fondest memories were those Sunday afternoon games we used to have. Nowhere else in the NBA did it. Yeah. I think yeah, like it's one o'clock. Game. It's like one o'clock games, the one o'clock games. Yeah, and, and a lot of people yeah. hate it. Play like the LA teams, man. Yeah, yeah. a lot of teams <laughs> used to hate it, but mm-hmm. I loved it. I loved it for some reason. I loved playing in the early afternoon on a Sunday and like seeing the fans in there screaming and and cheering on. Like it was, it was special. So I've always loved that. That's the one thing that's really stuck with me. Those Sunday afternoon games that we used to have was um were, were pretty special. Well, now um, you're, you're kind of watching the league as it is now. So who, who, who would you say are the, some of your favorite guys to watch right now? Some of my favorite guys to watch right now. Well, the obvious with the KDs, the LeBrons, the Giannis, um, you know, Luca, you know, Kyrie James. But I think um, I love – seeing the the young these young these young players blossoming into like the next generation of stars that's going to carry this league the Jason Tatums the the mm-hmm. Jalen Browns um I'm not John Morant John ja, ja Morant yeah, yeah John mm-hmm. Morant I mean, these guys are special but then yeah. just seeing, now I get to realize what the older players were seeing when we came into the league when LeBron and Melo and you know KD all these guys were coming into the league and was starting to take over now, you know, those guys are like on the tail end of their careers or um, are elder statesmen, I should say, because LeBron is still going strong somehow. Still going strong. Um, 19 yeah. years. It's crazy. Yeah, 19 <laughs> years. He's the same age. He wants that scoring title badly. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to get the average 18 <laughs> points for two years long, to get. As long as he plays. As long as he plays, he's healthy. He's going to get that scoring title. Yeah, it's, it's two years. It's, it's over. It's, it's going to happen. So, um, 
yeah, so, you know, I'm a big fan of Jason Tatum's and, you know, I would say Trey Young, but, the, you know, the way they uh, eliminated us from the playoffs, like, <laughs> I, can't, I can't say that with too much. Uh, you know, Trey Young, Joel Embiid, seeing um, how he's been able to persevere persevere through the early parts of his career and injury struggles and to, to become one of the best bigs in the NBA, you know, I, I love seeing that. So, um the NBA, the, the NBA is in great hands, so great it's hand. kind of hard yeah. to point Definitely. a couple of players, but I just love seeing um, the direction, the way the game is going. All right, dope. All right. So I got, so we got two more questions left. Um, the one question that I got that I didn't find on the list, but like I think about it now, I'm like, I, 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 I got to ask this question, man. You were in the league with Kobe. What memories you got playing with Kobe? Rest in peace, being or not with, but playing against Kobe. Like you were in the Olympics. Like, what memories you got with him in the league? <laughs> uh, wow. When we uh, when we played against them prior to the Olympics, I remember they had a lineup where it was Kobe, Melo, KD, LeBron, and, Ica, and Andre Iguodala. That was the five. <laughs> and, our point guard, <laughs> and our starting point guard was a oh, two guard was a 5'10". At the time, he might have been 40 years old. He, he came to me and was like, who should I guard? I said, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. They're about to let the dogs out. <laughs> They're about to let the dogs out. <laughs> I remember Kobe was guarding me in the post. And, you know, Luau and I were on the team. I think at the time, we were the only two NBA players on the team. And I'm posting up Kobe. And he did this move where... He grabs my hip, but is like reaching for the ball. So the referee's looking at him reach for the ball. The whole time he's got his hand on my hip. Mm -hmm. So he like yanks me. I fall, but it's, as he's reaching for the ball, he gets it. And I fall and I'm looking at the referee and he's like, what? And then Kobe looks at me and just gives me a wink. <laughs> <laughs> all, I could, all I could do was laugh. And you know what? <laughs> Funny enough, prior to the day before that, um, they got Nando's in Toronto. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Chicken spot. Chicken yeah, we got it. Yeah, in Lo in the UK, it's like Seven Eleven. They're everywhere. They're like, when I went out there, that's where I went. I went there yeah. when I went out there. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like maybe I'm dating myself, or maybe it's not popular. But pizza, pizza, as much as many pizza pizzas are everywhere. Nando, oh, that's wow. how they're there. That's how that's how many of them are in London. So when we played with a national team, Luau and I, regardless of what city we were in in the UK, we would try to find Nando's and eat. So this time we were going the day before we played the USA team and we're walking towards the Nando's and I remember seeing a figure, seeing a guy on, mm -hmm. uh, on a tr on, standing on a, uh, a light post, a lamp post, and he's just got his foot up and he's just resting like this. And you can see he's got like some people with him, but they're like 20 feet away, but they're like monitoring him. And as we get closer, I tapped the wow. I was like, is that? And he's like, yeah. I was like, it was Kobe. <laughs> So we go up to him, he's like, yo, what's going on? Like, how you doing? Like, what are you doing? He was like, you have to understand, there's nowhere else on the planet where I could stand on a main road like this and nobody say anything to me. It was in Manchester, wow. um, Manchester, um, England, and he was just standing there and people were just walking by him like he wasn't there. And he's like, wow. there's, not, there's nowhere else I can go where this would happen. And he was just basking and soaking it up. And it was a special moment because when you think about it, some of those guys, the LeBrons, the MJs, the Kobe's, yeah. they, it's hard for them to have human moments because everywhere mm -hmm. they go, they have to be Kobe. They have to be LeBron. They name, they're known by their, their one name. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. That they're, they're, they're spectacular. In the world that are known for this one name. You got Cher, you, know you got, you know, you got, they go, like Madonna. You know, yeah, you know what I'm saying? They're known for one name, yeah. Right, so, so now he, they always have to be on and for once he felt like i could just relax and be a human so you know prior to the the, the, the what he did to me in the game the, the next day um you know that moment was was pretty special when it came with kobe mm -hmm. uh, that's a that's a great story yeah well, sure yeah i mean you know i got i got kobe kobe sweater on you know i saw that my man makes those hoodies too yeah yeah that's dope man but um but yeah i guess last question for the for the evening um so yeah, motivation is really important, you know, like just like finding your why and like finding a reason why you do things, you know, really, really important. Like what has been uh, some of the most important advice that kind of you've ever received in your 
life to date? Like either by coach, player, mm -hmm. somebody, a parent growing up, like what's been the most important advice that kind of you've, that's that stuck with you? Well, I, I wouldn't say most important, but one of the most poignant things I've ever heard was said by one of my favorite rappers in J. Cole. Uh, I think the Grammys happened and, you know, he wasn't nominated or wasn't, didn't win. And I remember him saying, what's meant for me won't miss me. And that mm -hmm. wasn't meant for me. Wasn't meant mm -hmm. for me. Man, it put my whole life in perspective right then and there, you know, because, you know, there was, I bounced around in my career. I've played for, you know, a number of different teams. I always felt like uh, I wanted more of an opportunity to establish myself, at least in the NBA. Mm -hmm. And when he said that, when I read that, I was like, everything does happen for a reason. And for me, um, being on this side of the game now as an executive, uh, my path has been pretty special, I would say, um, because I would never expect that to have you know, worked for the Players Association for a year, scouted for one of the best uh, teams in sport uh, in regards to the San Antonio Spurs. Then I'm a GM at 33. Yeah. And then now I'm the president, you know, um, of, a G, of the G League team and, and with the Knicks. Like, that's special. But I realized yeah. that I wasn't put on this planet to play basketball. I was, I was here to use basketball as a conduit to get to where I, where I am now. Back to your first, one of your first questions about my, my te the teacher that inspired me the most, my coach. Um, now I see the purpose and, my, and what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be using that passion, using that passion, using my experience from basketball to lead through the game, to lead through the game and inspire a younger generation and help others who look like me and help them reach their, their plateau, reach their goal, because somebody did it for me when, when I was young. So it's now time to pay it forward and give back and do so. So... That's um that's my why and my and my purpose. I, I like to say. Right. Mm -hmm. that's right. I mean, mm -hmm. J Cole actually just got his flower. Like Jake just gave him his flowers yeah. on, yeah. on stage the other day, man. So as as dope, you know. Mm -hmm. Jake, mm -hmm. Cole guys, mm -hmm. just always telling stories. Always, like he's 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 a real guy, you know. So yeah, he's real. Mm -hmm. Funny, the first time I met J Cole, I was in Toronto. I was wow. in Toronto. He was at the OVO Fest. OVO Fest, for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was at the OVO Fest. He was at the OVO Fest. So seeing that moment and then us talking about this now and me quoting him, you know, it's pretty um, serendipitous, for sure. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy, crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, end of the podcast, but uh, I just want to say thank you, man. We really appreciate you coming on, talking to us, telling us your, your, you know, your story, you know, your journey, all of that. Uh, me being a huge Kobe fan, like the guys on the pod know I'm a huge Kobe fan. It's kind of hearing you talk about that Kobe experience, kind of it's dope for me personally. So I, I definitely appreciate you for that. Um, but yeah, uh, we're at that point of the podcast where we're gonna uh, shout out anything we're working on or anything we're doing or all that stuff. So fanfare, start with you, bro. Um, just follow me on Instagram, Chaz C H A S underscore Tenenbaum T E N E N B A U M. Can't be certified. Yeah, and me, I'm all about <laughs> Africa. I'm all about Africa. Part of yeah. what I said about inspiring and giving back, you know, being of Ghanaian heritage, and one of the only players of Ghanaian heritage to be in the NBA. Um, mm -hmm. Again, it's my purpose to um, give back to those who look like me and provide those opportunities. So at the moment, I'm, you know, where we're working on, I have a, ca a camp that I do and I have an academy in Ghana called Seed Academy Ghana that where we just provide those opportunities for young athletes to, to become successful through the, through the game. Whether it may not be the NBA, it may not be, you know, Europe or just the professional realm, but we're going to give them that platform to do something special with their life and, and give them opportunities. So that's, um, that's my biggest focus right now, as well as doing my, my primary job with the Knicks. Yeah. Yeah. So see, like, since I got you on the part, I got, like you just talked about, I got, I got to ask a question like you, working with um, like the African community and basketball and stuff, like, have you worked with basketball um, with our borders with like Maasai and basketball Africa and all that stuff? Have you been a part of that? Like kind of talk yeah. to us quickly about like being a part of that and the growth of basketball in Africa. Well, Africa, there was a time where we were saying Africa is the future. But if you look at the NBA now, Africa is here. Present, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. uh, 
couple of years, the the runner up who I felt like probably should have been the MVP and Joel Embiid, African, the two time, the back to back um, MVP and defense, defensive player of the year, Giannis, African, yeah. most improved player, Toronto's own, Pascal. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's mm-hmm. just a couple of years ago, last year's draft, there were nine Nigerian players drafted, like seven of them in the first round. Yeah. So that shows you what the continent has to offer and, 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 and what's about and then, to happen. And then if you look like recently, you look just at the Olympic uh, exhibition stuff with Nigeria beating the mm-hmm. USA team, right? So, yeah. Putting the world on notice. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> we're, we're not coming, we're here. <laughs> here. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Most definitely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was beautiful to yeah. see, you know, especially how far it has come and how far the, the players have come and what they've been able to do and you know, I, I love to see it and love to be, you know, a part of that generation of guys who are helping other players to to blossom into what they're doing now. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Uh, myself, you know, you can catch me on IG, real deal underscore Francis. Um, yeah, you know, all the, all, the, all the other parts we got, not so soft. We got uh, our boy Essay with Chatter Talks, all that stuff. You know, I, I'm not going to do the whole long-winded stuff that the senator does, but you can go check out those two podcasts as, as well as our podcast. And uh, we definitely, again, I want to say we definitely appreciate you, Pops, for being on with us. Yeah. Taking time out of your busy day. You know, Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, thanks for having me, man. Thanks for having me, fellas.